For the Indy 500, Clark raced a specially developed Lotus, producing just shy of 500 horsepower. However, although he already had a Formula One world title to his name, the Scotsman's CV cut no ice with the sniffy Indy officials, who made the upstart from across the pond take a rookie driving test before he could compete. Come Indy weekend, the upstart from across the pond qualified on the front row. And then, in the race itself, Clark up against America's finest oval races, won by just over two minutes. Jim Clark, first European to win at Indianapolis since 1916 set a new record of 150.686 miles per hour. So what was it that made Clark so good? What was it that made him capable of winning in any type of car? Jimmy was an absolute natural driver, and he did it without thinking. He didn't know why he was driving in this style the way he did. In the period that we're talking about, we had one and a half litre cars, 200 horsepower. If you drove the car too hard, you would scrub the speed off. And if you lose a bit of speed, it's very difficult to actually make it up again. And that's what Jimmy had the knack of keeping the momentum of the car going. I don't think that any of the modern drivers could have driven the car anywhere near as quickly as Jimmy did, because he was just so precise. Besides a supernatural ability to coax speed out of the car, Clark also possessed another vital skill. A lot of very good racing drivers died in Lotuses because the Lotus was a very fragile car. But Jim Clark was so smooth that he never put too much stress on the areas of a car that would give up. A Barcelona in practice he came in after 10 laps and we were doing 10. He said, there's something on the left rear. Something, something. Is, I can feel something on the left rear. It's, it's not right. We looked over, we checked everything. Everything felt good. Uh, we said, no, there's, there's something wrong. So that night, I took the left rear suspension to, to pieces and lo and behold, the, one of the wheel burns has just started to wear. I don't know how Anybody could ever feel that, but he did. After the race, when you stripped his car down and you stripped his co-driver's car down, you could always tell which parts came off Jimmy's car and which parts came off the other driver's car because the parts of Jimmy's car were more or less pressed in. But don't think for a minute that Clark was one of those drivers that could only win in a perfect car. One year at Spa, for example, he was leading the race when his gearbox started to let go. Did he give up? Nope. Instead, he drove the rest of the race, and we're talking 160 miles an hour in the wet, with one hand on the steering wheel and the other holding the gear lever in place. And he still won by nearly five minutes. As the 1965 season rolled on, Clark, having won both Formula Two championships, the Tasman series, and the Indy 500, now faced one remaining challenge. The biggest challenge, the Formula One world title. For the F1 races, Clark would be driving a modified version of the Lotus 25, the car that had taken him to the world championship two years earlier. But as amazing as the 25 was, there was no getting around the fact 
1965, it was a three-year-old design, and the updated version only had minor changes. So how would Jim cope? At the season's opening race in South Africa, up against such legends as Jack Brabham, Graham Hill, and reigning world champion John Surtees, Clark won by half a minute and did so while suffering from a slipped disc. <laughs> 